It's perfect, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, good morning. Um, my name is Pepin, and uh, I'm to presenting this together with Mandy. I would like to give you an update about the World Fetch Breeding Consortium uh, in terms of our m and &E system data. Um, first of all, I would like to tell you about our consortium membership. We started the consortium in 2017 with 19 members. It has increased over time. Uh, however, we see in 2021 is like a small dip in the consortium membership to 38 uh, members. Uh, I think that's related probably to the COVID uh, pandemic and some of the seed companies or members uh, uh, like got into, into troubles or tried to save some costs uh, in 2021. And we expect this to increase again uh, this year. Uh, we also have this note here that uh, there's about 10 companies that are not a consortium member, but are still part of the special projects. Uh, so we, I think that those 10 companies uh, also again join us in the, as consortium member in, in the next uh, or this year. In terms of membership, uh, initially we had a large fraction of larger companies, larger companies that are above 100 uh, employees. And that decreased over time and, uh, and stabilized now about 58% of the companies are large uh, and 42% 42 company, 42 of the companies are considered smaller companies. And I have to mention there also that about half of the, uh, exactly half of the members of the consortium at the moment are from India uh, and the rest coming from all over uh, Asia and Southeast Asia, as well as East Asia. Now, of course, uh, one of the benefits of consortium membership is that you get to get free a limited amount of free seed shipments that can be requested to the World Vatch Gene Bank. And uh, uh, since 2018, we have sent almost 8,000 uh, seed shipments uh, to seed companies uh, in Asia as part of this consortium. And uh, uh, last year in particular was a, was a very high number of seed requests, 3,200 especially for pepper and the pumpkin. And that is related because we uh, launched the pepper and the, and the pumpkin projects in 2021. So that's related to this high amount of sh seed shipments. But it sh does show that uh, the consortium members uh, do request a large number of uh, seed uh, shipments every year. Now we do an annual survey among all consortium members. And that is because we would like to know, are they actually using world fetch developed breeding lines and hybrids? Um, and also what are the priorities that uh, should inform our breeding programs over time? Now this data is very important uh, because we still this consortium or the world fetch breeding programs are largely funded by governments. Uh, of course, the consortium members make a financial contribution, uh, but it's still largely the public uh, sector donors uh, uh, are, are supporting our breeding programs. And, and we need to show them, of course, that the, this consortium is creating impact for farmers in, in Asia. So what we did is we sent a, a survey a form and like an Excel sheet to 69 companies that have been as the past and current consortium members. Um, we sent this by email to the voting representatives, um, and then we uh, uh, get feedback from about uh, from 36 companies provided data this year. Uh, just over half of the consortium members, but there's a substantial improvement over past years. All in all, we have received 40, uh, data from 45 uh, seed companies uh, since we started data collection in 2017. I would like to thank you and also this, those 36 companies that have provided data this year it's very much for, for this data. It is very valuable and much appreciated. Now, let me dive into the, our key performance indicators immediately. <clears throat> what we see here is that uh, at the moment, uh, 23 uh, companies of this um, um, uh, like indicated to be using tomato and pepper germplasm in the breeding programs. For bidding board, it is 21 companies. It's a bit less for pumpkin, which started more recently. Uh, there are, the second row, you see the number of varieties that are based on world fetch germplasm, 66 for tomatoes, uh, 33 for peppers, 23 for bitter gourd. And the last row, you see the uh, amount of seed sales in tons per year that are sold of those, uh, of those uh, uh, varieties that contain uh, uh, world fetch germplasm. And it's, for example, 14.2 tons uh, for tomatoes. What we see over time, which is interesting, is that the number of varieties that are reported to have uh, to include world fetch uh, germplasm has uh, like quite substantially increased over time. Um, in 2017, it was just uh, 40, 47 varieties. 
and last year 120 varieties were reported to have uh, to be based on world fetch germ plasm, uh, a very large number of tomato varieties, but also an increasing number of uh, bitter gourd varieties. Yeah. Uh, now, how are these lines of world fetch that we supply used? Uh, uh, there's, of course, a lot of background material like heat resistance or bacterial wilt resistance in tomatoes and pepper uh, that, is, that is still being used. But also, uh, a lot of the hybrids have used at least one parent, and sometimes for bitter gourd, especially, uh, both parental lines uh, came from world fetch. Uh, so, for bitter gourd, that's interesting 29% of both uh, hybrid parents uh, came from world fetch. So in the increasing use of uh, oil touch lines and F1 hybrids is, uh, is important here. Uh, and we can convert the seed sales data, because we know how much uh, as the average seed rate for per farmer. So we can estimate how many farmers uh, this material is reaching. And this is the, the key indicator that our donors are, are interested in. And we also we see an increase over time. And we estimated in 2021, based on the seed sales that were re reported by, the, by, by, uh, by seed companies, uh, 524,000 uh, smallholder farm households uh, are reached in Asia with or uh, with or breeding, uh, true breeding programs. Uh, the last slides uh, show uh, some of the key uh, traits that were prioritized by, the, by, by you through the survey. And it's interesting to note here that for all the four crops, uh, Bigoma virus resistance is the number one trait that is of interest. Uh, we leave this uh, interpretation of this data to the, to the breeders. Uh, and you can discuss it, of course, with the breeders in the coming days. But Bigoma virus resistance here, for example, uh, bacterial wilt resistance, but also shelf life um, is, is high, high importance and high yield that appears in every, uh, every priority setting. Uh, high yield, of course, is important here. But heat tolerance is also an important one that is uh, ranking high in, in all these, these figures. So this is for tomato. You can have a, a brief look here. This is for pepper. Also, again, Bigoma virus resistance as number one. But number two, anthracnose resistance, uh, which is one of the priorities uh, for our breeding program. High temperature stress tolerance, yeah. Uh, again, very high, high priority. For bitter gourd, uh, we see here, uh, again, Bigoma virus resistance, high yield, but also their powdery mildew resistance, which is important for the cucurbits GI line development. Um, and then finally, for pumpkins, they receive very high priority to all kinds of virus resistance, Bigoma virus resistance, uh, cucumber mosaic virus resistance, papaya ring spot virus resistance, uh, all ranked very high. And uh, Dr. Dylan can, can elaborate more on that. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. Again, I thank you very much for your attention and thank you for those companies that have uh, shared us the data that are uh, uh, very valuable to us. Yeah. Uh, open for questions. Back to you, Roland. Thanks. Uh, there is uh, one question in the first row, please. Good morning. I'm Dr. Varlakshmi, bitter gourd breeder from IHR. Uh, okay. Good morning. Uh, I could, yeah, I could see the data. I could find out like 59% uh, or so of uh, germplasm of bitter gourd has been shared with the partners. But the seed produced out of it is 4% only. So can you explain that? Why is such low? Like what could be the reason? Um, hold on. You're, in, in the, it, you're referring to the table, right? Uh, the the the, the four point one is actually the, the lower column was the yeah. seed sales. So, uh, although twenty one seed companies are using or bitter gourd uh, germplasm, yeah, but uh, they the, produce a total of four point one tons of seed last year. Yeah. Why is such huge gap? Like, can you explain that? Like, what far they have imported the germplasm, or whether that has been really translated into the production or not? Well, so 4.1 tons is the actual production of seed by seed companies, and this this has increased a lot. It might still uh, sound look small, uh, and not all seed companies are, are reporting still on bitter gourd seed sales because we just started this uh, um, bitter gourd, and Dylan can explain a bit more. But it, it, that's just like the, over, increased over the last three years because three years ago we had zero sales of uh, bitter gourd germ plasm from World Fetch. So this is a very, very steep increase, actually. Um, and uh, we expect it also to, to continue increasing in the future as, as more and more um, world batch hybrids are entering the market. Yeah. To get the I mean, data, that's it. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please don't forget to use the chat box uh, if you're online and if you want uh, to participate uh, with the discussion. Uh, please could you introduce yourself and... Yeah. Uh, uh, Hello, Pepe. Very nice. It is, uh, I'm Chandra Pathak uh, from Nath Biozin uh, in Aurangabad in India, which is at present very hot. Here we are in the very pleasant climate, of course. Uh, thank you. I think this is one of the very good analysis uh, we have made. Uh, but I think the, uh, the, the, the analysis shows whatever work we, uh, has been done between by the consortium as well as the use by using uh, world waste material. I think it is much more than what we uh, are reporting here. I, I'm sure many of these companies uh, will agree with me that the amount of uh, germplasm we are using, particularly tomato and pepper, has been very good. And we are very happy with that. And probably in future also, we will have more and more uh, such collaborations, which can also affect a lot. Similarly, now Dr. Dillon's program of bitter gold, we are also participating in these ones are very, very encouraging because the new uh, gene uh, pool he is bringing for assistance to some of those viruses as well as uh, powdery mildew will be of great help. I'm sure all the uh, participants here will be very happy to see that, but I'm still uh, say that the amount, uh, the numbers what we see here, uh, the gain is much more than that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. That's and uh, yeah, we, we can only report what what our seed company consortium members are reporting. Of course, uh, we cannot guess uh, what what sales are there that might also include our material. So, uh, thank you for this comment, and I hope that then that encourages other seed companies to also report their data of, over time. Yeah, but thanks, thanks so much. Thank you very much. We have the next question. Hi, good morning. I am Ramu from INV Seeds. Uh, thank you very much for the update. Uh, my question is, uh, one of the slides you showed uh, the number of varieties which are coming out of the consortium, starting from 2017. The 2017 had 50 plus and then growing up to 104 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my question is that 57 in the 2017 is presumably before the consortium. Is that right? If yes, is consortium output is only 50 plus over three years? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to say because of, well, of course a lot of uh, seed companies are using materials that they obtained before the start of the consortium in 2017. So actually the, the most of the impact that we are seeing at the moment is still probably from breeding lines obtained or produced before the consortium starts. So it's for world fetch not exactly possible and maybe not necessary to exactly say what's the impact of the consortium and what's the impact uh, that was generated before 2017. Uh, because of course you continue using the same breeding lines, yeah. Thank you very much. The next question uh, is coming. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thanks for the update. Uh, I'm Salim from Rallys India Limited. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, that uh, since uh, uh, most of the consortium members are getting the uh, similar lines, what would be the exclusivity for the uh, individual companies for this? How, uh, since uh, in Bittergar especially, there are 29 uh, companies who have reported to be using uh, same uh, parent. Uh, is there any kind of exclusivity that can be provided? Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, Dylan, uh, are you in the audience? Would you like to comment on, the, on that one? Because you're not uh, getting all the same material, yeah? yeah. Is Dylan there? Thanks, Dylan. Uh, it's, not, it's not a question, question is exclusivity, right? So when we distribute our bitter gold lines, or of course, any tomato or pepper lines, so the exclusivity period is uh, for that particular two years, like that. So after the two years, it's open to other public. So that is only for particular period, okay? Uh, Dylan, can you also comment on uh, exclusivity issues of lines that are distributed in the scope of uh, the special projects? Yeah, the special project, for example, it is also for that period which the project lasts. And for example, now we are running uh, uh, pumpkin breeding project, you know, with the more than 15 seed companies. 
So the exclusivity period is up to September 2023, right? So it's earmarked very clearly. Uh, when we sign the, uh, the project with your management, right? Thank you very much. Could we answer your question? Thank you. <clears throat> there is still no question online. I can't believe with more than 70 participants online, uh, but we have a second question, please. Yeah, again, uh, this is for Dylan. Normally, uh, maybe you all are feeling like we, we uh, in tomato and pepper, when we join the consortium, we get certain lines uh, free of cost. Uh, we don't pay for to AVRDC for that, but in bitter good, it is not like that. Can uh, Dillo also help us in in giving some lines free? Maybe not all. The like in uh, tomato, we get uh, ten lines. Uh, same with the pepper, also we get free of cost from maybe it 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 also consumes some money from the consortium. But uh, maybe Dr. Dillo can help in this. Yeah. Uh, you, we will go exactly by the, the written agreement with the management, right? So the three phases of the Pitra Gold, which were, it was not like that, as you said that, right? So no free was, uh, material was there. Um, but now, we, not from now onwards, we are uniform, tomato, pepper, and Pitra Gold. For example, the fourth phase of the Pitra Gold project will be launched by EFSA. 20 lines will be free, right? So it's a uniform. Right, thanks. Yeah, and, and there's of course a lot of material outside that are not, not exclusive anymore, right? It can be ordered from the seed catalog, yeah? So the, the free sh seed shipments apply to all the crops, right? Not only to tomato and pepper, you can also order, use that to order your bitter good. Yes, please, in the second row. Same, same in case of pumpkin also? Yeah. I mean, same in case of pumpkin also as far as exclusivity? Yeah, no, I, I tell you as already that pumpkin exclusivity is up to September 2023, right? After that, these lines will be open to the public. Okay. But mind one thing, that if there's another phase of the pumpkin project, it overlaps. Uh, I mean, after, immediately after that, 23, if the world wants to launch that, and if the lines again come, because there are many seed companies who approached us once we, we, we started the pumpkin project. They didn't join in the, in the beginning. I don't want to mention a company, there are many. And they said, can we join now? We said, no, because the period is over. But at that time in September 23, if Velvet launches another pumpkin project on the demand of the seed companies, then, these lines are hybrids, they come under that exclusivity. So it depends upon the circumstances at that time. But if the vendor doesn't decide or there's a window to start with the new one, right? There's a gap, then this will be open to the public. Okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, there's one more question in the first round. This is to Dr. Dillon only. I just would like to know for bitter gold, the exclusivity period is over or when it will be getting over? For bitter gold. Yeah. For the bitter gold, our current phase three project that ends on 30, uh, the last week of May uh, and, uh, this, this year. year, right? And then the fourth phase of the bitter gold project will start from the first January. 2023 for two years. You have a gap of six months or seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you want to order, but yes, I have kept that real I, question. I mean, also I requested yeah, you, but yeah. because of the Yeah, in fact, the one APSA, APSA also have one team which wants to study the, the, the race survey yeah. of the bitter group. And uh, then the procedure was very complicated to get it through the seed company, which already got our material, yeah. and we couldn't supply them. I think there's also a window for that small project also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it is locked again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, sorry to ask you. Uh, you see, um, at present, we are getting the seeds uh, through our uh, NDPGR uh, national system for importing seeds. 
uh, we are getting uh, sometimes too much delay in, uh, in getting the seats, although it has been dispatched timely from AVRDC or World Wes now, but we get it late. Like in HST heat set project, we got very late and we started late. So uh, my question is, can we make some mechanism? I don't know if it is possible or not. Through our Equisat campus, if we can get the seed uh, through you, it can be easier. And then uh, distributed uh, from there. So I don't know. This, there can be a uh, possibility looked into that. Yeah. Thank you. Who is the best to answer this question, Dylan or Ram? Uh, Derek would like to answer the question. Dylan. Okay, thanks so much for this question. So, um, yeah, this is a common comment we get through this consortium. And my answer is always the same, that I'm not convinced that by sending the seed to our Hyderabad office and then having the same MPPGR delays plus a PEQ trial at Hyderabad, in addition to a seed multiplication, will get the seed to you any faster. I suspect that if this model would be longer because we would experience the same delays, if not longer, because we don't have friends in MPP or whatever uh, to, to do that. So. For us, I can imagine this model would take a long, and I think the best thing to do, uh, and maybe Dylan agree, well, Dylan doesn't have necessarily the same problems as Sol and ACA, but um, instead of writing three, pro three year projects, I think we need to write four year projects or five year projects and account for this extreme delay that is caused uh, through this phytosanitary requirements. I think this is the best, the best way forward. Thank you, I hope that answers. Thank you very much. We have still short time, if necessary, for questions. If uh, there is no more question uh, to this uh, first presentation, I would like to thank Pepin. Mm -hmm.